We are all living inside watersheds. Sabay-sabay tayong matuto tungkol sa watersheds at alamin kung gaano ito kahalaga para sa atin. Straight from the expert, Academician Rex Victor Cruz. Ang watersheds, ito ay bahagi ng ating kalupan. It's part of the landscape that uh, collects uh, rainwater. And uh, ang function niya is supposed to uh, store as much rainfall as it can underground so that uh, we can have sustainable water supply even during summer days when there is no rain. So basically, that is the major uh, function of a watershed. Capture rain, store it, and then release it when we need it. Ang buong Pilipinas can be subdivided into different watersheds, small, uh, medium, large, and very large watersheds. So basically, there's no area in the Philippines, except perhaps yung mga maliliit na island, uh, you know, palubog na palitaw na, na islands, you know, but basically, practically, yung mainlands natin are all part of watershed. So, think of this as, uh, you know, you are all living or we are all living inside watersheds. Tulad ng sinabi ni Dr. Cruz, tayo ay naninirahan sa loob ng watershed. Pero, Alam mo ba kung ano ang pinakamalapit na watershed sa lugar mo? Ang mga, usually mga sikat na watershed yung malalaki, no? Yung malalaki because of uh, the volume of water that they can, ano, can collect and that they supply, you know, for different uh, uses. Like, for instance, ang Angat, no? Angat is a very popular uh, watershed now because it supplies water to Metro Manila. And then there is the Pantabangan River Basin, no? Uh, which is a very large watershed that collects water and supply uh, irrigation to hundreds of thousands of uh, uh, agricultural lands in central Luzon. And there are many other big uh, uh, watersheds like the Cagayan uh, River Basin, the, uh, the um, uh, Agno River Basin coming from Cordillera and uh, Mountain Province, and then of course, Mindanao River Basin, the second largest uh, watershed in the Philippines. So, Bicol River Basin, you know, it's, uh, it's also a very popular uh, uh, watershed in the Philippines. Gaano nga ba kahalaga ang mga watershed na ito para sa buhay nating mga Pilipino? Well, uh, balikan na natin yung sinabi natin kanina, no? Angat, uh, Angat Watershed, um, meron silang dam doon, no? yung Angat Dam. And it's meant to uh, supply domestic water supply to uh, Metro Manila, but it also supplies uh, agricultural water or irrigation water to rice fields of Bulacan, you know. And then, of course, um, um, there are many other functions of the watershed, such as, for instance, uh, for biodiversity conservation, you know, for uh, agricultural purposes. Actually, yung mga agricultural lands natin, they are part of watersheds, no? Sila yung tinatawag na floodplains or downstream areas ng ating mga watershed. Ang mga watersheds kasi natin, merong upstream areas, midstream at saka downstream, you know? So downstream areas, usually naandyan yung floodplains, andyan yung mga agricultural lands, residential areas, you know, all the way to the coastal areas where uh, watersheds drain their water. So uh, many different uses for domestic, industrial, commercial, and even for ecological and environmental uh, purposes. Ngayong alam na natin kung gaano kahalaga ang watershed para sa ating pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay, alamin naman natin ang mga banta na maaaring makasira o makaapekto rito. We can mention, for instance, uh, land use change, you know, as a really big challenge to watershed, uh, watersheds. And pag uh, pinag kasi natin land use change, we're actually talking about land conversion, you know? And land conversion, such as, for instance, conversion of forest lands into agricultural lands, and conversion of agricultural lands into urban areas, ito yung, uh, ito yung isa sa mga major challenges ng watersheds natin. Because uh, the ability of the watershed to capture and store uh, rainwater depends a lot on the quality of uh, the soil, 
no, soil surface. And the quality of soil surface depends on what kind of activities or uses are actually going on. You know? So, ibig sabihin yan, kapag ka hindi natin uh, kontrolado and regulated, you know, yung paggamit ng kalupaan natin, you know, the soil is, is going to be uh, jeopardized. No? It, can be, uh, it can be damaged to a point that uh, it loses its ability to infiltrate water. You know, pag sinabi natin infiltrate, yung tubig ay lumulusot sa lupa, you know, it penetrates the soil and then uh, goes all the way to the groundwater storage you know, in most cases. So land use change or land conversion you know, is a major challenge, but of course, you know, how can we miss climate change? You know, climate change is, uh, is going to uh, be a big challenge as well of many watersheds. You know? Not only because rainfall pattern is going to change, that there will be areas that will get drier and areas that will get wetter, but uh, at the same time also it, you know, it will affect the uh, vigor and health of uh, vegetation cover of a watershed, which is an important part of the watershed vegetation cover because it is a key to maintaining good uh, soil characteristics that, you know, that uh, as I said earlier, is important for the watershed to be able to capture as much rainwater as possible during rainy season. At ang susi upang makaiwas sa mga banta ng pagkasira ay ang pagkaroon ng maayos na watershed management system at magagawa ito sa tulong ng mahusay na pananaliksik. The science of watershed management is understanding how the watershed will behave you know, given certain conditions of the environment that includes people, that includes climate, you know, and that includes many other things, okay? Now, where does research come in? Now, research will come in in uh, building up the science, the understanding about the watershed. Yes, we have good reference materials about watershed, and that's what we're teaching our students, you know? Pero ang kulang palata, ang kulang pa rin sa atin is yung, yung basic science about how watersheds in our country with our unique, you know, with our unique uh, climate, with our unique uh, socio-political landscape, you know, how the watersheds behave. Wala pa tayong ganong kalalim na understanding na, no? Mahigit na apat na pung taon na sa watershed management research si Dr. Rex Cruz. At sa loob ng mahabang panahong ito ay napakarami na ng mga watershed areas ang napag-aralan niya. Um, we are here now at the Makiling Botanical Garden of uh, the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, being managed by College of Forestry and Natural Resources. Where we are now is one of the oldest, probably one of the oldest uh, site of watershed research in the Philippines. I mentioned about earlier uh, my early engagement in uh, a big uh, UPLB program, the Upland Hydroecology Program. This is one of the earliest sites of that program. And uh, uh, this river, this river is one of the, uh, probably the earliest rivers that was monitored, you know, uh, for its stream flow and the quality of flow. This is still one of the favorite sites for uh, watershed research in the, uh, in the college, in the university. And uh, right now, I think uh, we continue to monitor this, you know, yung level ng too big, and then I think uh, they're still uh, working on the quality of water here. They're, they're monitoring it. But Outside of, uh, outside of this watershed, uh, the Malawian watershed in the Makiling Forest Reserve, uh, there are also other studies that uh, we have conducted you know, in different parts of Mount Makiling. But those will range from, uh, th those will range from upland cropping systems and its impacts on water, on soil, and then also uh, studies on biodiversity you know, and how biodiversity relates to the uh, to the health of the forest and then the health of the soil, which is an important part of the watershed. Dinala si Dr. Rex Cruz ng kanyang pag-aaral sa iba't ibang parte ng Pilipinas. Pinag-aralan niya ang mga pagbabago sa dami at kalidad ng tubig doon. Now, most of our studies in these watersheds are uh, mainly on monitoring the changes in the 
uh, in the volume and quality of water, you know, and which is very important because we want to understand how the volume of water and the quality of water changes with uh, what is happening within the watershed. Because the, the water flowing in the stream is a reflection of what is going on inside the watershed. Uh, if the watershed is uh, healthy, in other words, you know, you have good vegetation cover, no merong kang marami forest, and, and uh, if the people are using the land, if they're farming it, if they're using it properly, you know, and so on, this will uh, give way to a clean water, you know, clean water, good amount of water that will be flowing throughout the year. Naisulat ni Dr. Rex Cruz ang isang aklat na pinamagatang Guidelines for Watershed Management in the Philippines na ginagamit ngayon bilang reference sa pagtuturo sa iba't ibang paaralan. And then there are also watershed areas uh, where uh, we don't do basic research but we use it for development type of uh, projects, you know, action-oriented type of projects that we do for, for instance, for local government units, okay? We help local government units, for instance, develop their, uh, develop, develop their LCCAP and their uh, DRRMP or the Disaster Risk Management Plan, okay? Using the watershed as the unit for planning and uh, problem analysis. And uh, we're doing this, for instance, in uh, different watersheds in Aurora province, you know? And uh, we're doing that together with the uh, provincial government of, uh, of Aurora. Uh, what, what we're doing here is uh, try to develop their comprehensive land use plans no, and other plans using the watershed as the physical framework. You know? And uh, this is our advocacy. And hopefully, you know, we can continue to multiply our cooperation and collaboration with different LGUs across, across the country. At dahil pa rin sa kanyang pag-aaral, Tungkol sa watershed management, nakatulong din si Dr. Rex Cruz sa mga local government units sa paggawa ng kanilang disaster risk management plan. All of us are actually living inside the watershed and we practically do anything and everything inside the watershed. So the, uh, the mere fact that, uh, you know, that if all of us will just be conscious about this, that we are inside the watershed, then uh, you know we can be careful in in uh, in in our activities, especially those that produces waste, you know whether solid waste or whether uh, uh, wastewater, no? or activities that will uh, that will enhance or facilitate, for instance, uh, 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 destructive uses of the natural resources found inside the watershed, you know, by using, for instance, uh, um, uh, wastefully materials or items that are derived from forest resources, you know, these are all contributory, you know, to the protection of the watershed. If we can, can, if we can be very, very conservative in the way we use natural resources, those are, you know, those are the things that we can contribute to the protection of the watershed because that will protect the natural condition of our watershed, particularly the forest, which is an important uh, part of the watershed. Sa kabila ng mga pananaliksik na ito, ang pangangalaga sa ating mga watersheds ay nakasalalay pa rin sa ating lahat na naninirahan dito. Napakarami ng ating pakinabang sa watersheds at ang pangangalaga nito ay nakasalalay sa ating mga kamay. At ngayong Zero Waste Month, sana ay mapaalalahanan tayong lahat na mas maging conscious sa bawat galaw natin dahil maaaring nakakasakit na pala tayo sa ating kalikasan. Hanggang sa susunod, sabay-sabay tayong matuto ng mga bagong kaalaman at ma-inspire sa kwento ng buhay ng mga eksperto dito lang sa Expert Talk Online.